to the Houston Texans. And last season, they went 4-12. <coughs> and 12. Their needs were cornerback, wide receiver, safety, tight end, and center. Obviously, we could have tossed in uh, – uh, quarterback, we could have talked. I mean, it, it, the Texans their needs are overall. everything. Every single position they stink at. They don't yes. have a single good player on their roster. Straight up, Brandon Cooks, yeah. maybe. I don't know. I, I will tell you this: <laughs> um, when you are trying to rebuild a roster, what you need is a ton of guys. You just need to take as many shots as you possibly can, trade down as often as possible, just draft as many dudes as you possibly can, and they traded up to go and get Nico Collins in the third round, a wide receiver. <laughs> They they wasted picks to go up and try and get guys in the third round. So their their draft was quarterback Davis Mills out of Stanford in the third round. Third round also, they traded up and got wide receiver Nico Collins out of Michigan. Tight end Brevin Jordan. Now, I like that pick. That was pretty good in, uh, in the fifth round. Uh, then they got Garrett Wallow out of TCU and Roy Lopez out of Arizona in the fifth and sixth round. And I don't understand any of this. This makes no sense. So maybe it wasn't all Bill O'Brien. Maybe that entire front office is just complete garbage. Right. Uh, give well, give me well, your thoughts here. Well, if Bill O'Brien also didn't set them up very well, it's hard to oh, have yeah. a good draft when you don't have a first or second round. And we can all agree, Bill O'Brien's the one guy during the pandemic where we're like, hey, man, pull the mask down and cover up that thing. Like, don't let anything get in there. <laughs> he looks like he wouldn't care if he dropped the baby, I swear to God. Bill O'Brien... <laughs> absolutely destroyed this franchise. I mean, that's what he did. He destroyed it. And then you come in, you go, okay, we don't have those picks. And Deshaun Watson wants out of here. Maybe we'll be able to trade him for a bunch of draft capital. And then, of course, uh, that's not going to happen. No one's trading for Deshaun Watson now. We don't even know if he's going to be able to play. Probably won't. He sh- looks like he should be suspended. I'm not buying his excuse. There's a little bit too much smoke there uh, for me to think he's completely innocent. It's just uh, kind of weird and there's lots of jokes that we could have. That low-hanging fruit is all over the place, and that's almost a pun as well for what he was doing. So uh, you look at this team. Couldn't stop the run. Couldn't stop the pass. Couldn't run the football. Could throw the football because they had Watson. Now they're not going to be able to do that. So now it's supposed to be Davis Mills out of Stanford and what other – Tyrod you know, Taylor. Tyrod Taylor. Yep. Tyrod. I mean, this is going to be probably be the worst team in the league. They're going to compete with Detroit for the worst team in the league. And it's sad when they, they would look at Detroit and be jealous that they have Jared bleeping Goff. I mean, I come say, on. I think Detroit right now would be like a seven point favorite and a new yes, site exactly. right now. I really do. Exactly. I really think do. About like, that. Th- yeah, think Detroit's about that. a lot better than this team. Yes, this is going to be the worst team. And so I'm not exactly sure what they're supposed to do because they just don't have any capital. They had to go get some kind of quarterback. If you're going to trade up, up. I think you mentioned Kellen Mond who went to the Vikings. That would have been somewhere where I make the move up like, hey, let's get someone who can play. What the hell is Davis Mills out of Stanford going to do with this team? He's going to get killed. He's going to get yes. killed. Yes, He's going to be the next David Carr. He's going to get killed there. They have absolutely, I mean, Kiki QT, I, did he leave? He might have left. Brandon Cook, I mean, where the hell is he going to go with the football? Who's going to run it? This team is going to be an underdog in every single game they play. Rightfully so. Not really in love with the draft. Don't understand why they're giving up draft. That you're absolutely right. They needed more and more and more picks. Instead, they waited on the Deshaun Watson thing too long. As soon as soon as he said he wanted out, they should have said, "This is our chance to get some picks back and rebuild this thing." Because there's no sense in paying a quarterback max dollars when the rest of your team is absolute garbage and you know you have no chance of winning anything. Uh, this front office has been the worst front office in the league for the last five years. They continue to do it this year. Big thumbs down for me on this draft and this whole organization. I agree. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. They, they were my fourth, and 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 it wasn't even close. They're they're probably one of the the, the worst in in all of the the whole draft. Um, some of that is I tried to give them a little credit of they are doing the best that they can with what they have. All of these draft picks that they should have are all taken away from them. Okay, right. moving, giving up a few picks late to, to get up a little bit in the third round. That doesn't bother me. Davis Mills pick doesn't bother me. The problem is, is there's no, there's nothing they could have done in this draft to, to have, to have impressed me, or I think even really to make their football team any better this year at all. I, I think yeah. they're really bad. I, I think their, their coaching staff is going to be, basically playing the whole game with their t- hands tied and and they're going to they're going to have to be responsible for what I believe is probably going to be an 0 and 16 team unless Deshaun gets to play now if Deshaun gets to play we have a whole different game changer because he 
played behind this team last year that weren't a whole lot different, and and he made shit happen. So um, I do think he's one of the best football players in the league. And, you know, I, but, but I'm with you. If he gets cleared by the league and somebody offers you two first-round picks for him, you take it. You take it and you yep. don't even you, – you just say thank you so much. Yeah. Let's just say if he gets cleared by the league, I'm going to go out and uh, do a few different things as well. Because if that's okay, then <laughs> hell, let's give it a shot. Let's see what happens. I can't do all the things he does because I've told you boys this before. I'm a grower, not a shower. So I can't be smacking him around like he was doing there. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> nonetheless, uh, I'll be surprised if he's not suspended at least six games. There's just no way he's not. Oh, yeah. So that was my question. I wanted, to, I wanted to ask you specifically about him. Do you think, are we looking at, a year suspension? Are we looking at half a year? Are we looking at six games? Are we looking at what do we? Is there a world that you can conceive of that he doesn't play football anymore? It's it's because... really interesting. Oh, did we lose him? Oh, so God. for me, oh, what I think go. here is if Saller to anybody and admits guilt, he's he's. Are we back? Are we back? Do we freeze up? Okay, yep. I, yeah. I will say, uh, if he pays a single dollar in a settlement he's getting suspended for at least six games because he's admitting guilt right there. That's definitely against the person. I would imagine that's against the personal conduct policy, touching people with your stuff while they're rubbing you. I would assume is against the rules of the NFL conduct policy. And if this goes where it's, he's going to go to court and keep battling this in the court of public opinion, you could very well see him end up on that commissioner's exemption list, which is nowhere you want to be. And that'll be at least a half a year. It's a really dicey situation. I will be stunned if he is a starting quarterback week one for the Texans. Well, so I'm not worried about him being a starting quarterback. I don't think that's actually a realm of possibility, but the commissioner exempt list, I would rather be there than I would rather sure. be suspended because the, the team has to pay me. And so exactly. that big contract I get, I'm not missing one penny until I come mm-hmm. off the commissioner's exempt list. Yep. yep, completely agree. And it won't and and he's it won't won't hold you, but, out anyway. So But I think if he pay if he pays a single dollar in settlement, I think you see that suspension slapped on the next day. But but don't you think that would be a better situation for him? Put you in his shoes, forget it, and and say you can pay all this out and know that you'll get a six game suspension and then it's all over with and yep. you can then fight for your trade and and get on to a better team. Everybody knows what they're buying now. They know what they're getting. The Texans know what they're selling and yep. and and you can move on with your life. Do you think the, yep. just the ability and the to to breathe again and say sure. we at least have understanding of this is what my life looks like? Yeah, I would be doing that right now. That's it. I would have too. I would be doing. I would be doing that right now. You know, the reports that they asked him two weeks before this went public to hey pay this. I would have been like, yeah, how much and where and to whom? Because I don't think we had to put the pink hats on. He's yeah. got to be women's rights, women's voting rights, breast cancer awareness, everything that you can possibly be to support women. He needs to start doing right now. Yeah. Pay that settlement, eat your medicine, move on, and stop getting massages for Christ's sake. Yeah. Good Lord. <laughs> or, or just find one professional and have them come to your house. Exactly. And that, let that one person be your expert and let them yeah. do it forever. Yes. Yeah. Stop asking waitresses at the Chili's that you that you went to in Houston to uh, you know don't, come to your house. Don't find your drink. massage therapist on Snapchat. Let's not. You should do not that. do That's the that. Best you should not do that. <laughs> All right. And by <laughs> the way, by. we uh, we will have a uh, a Houston attorney on with us next week to discuss all this Deshaun Ooh. Watson stuff. So uh, so everybody. You know, if you are not already subscribed, go ahead and do that. Like the video, share it out, all that good stuff. Make sure you are subscribed on the podcast and on YouTube. Uh, but yeah, yeah, we will we will have a Houston based attorney that is uh, pretty knowledgeable about this situation, and he will fill us in on on what's going on with it. Uh, we'll move yeah. on. And le- thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at Gary WCE at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.